Last week we saw the rule book go out the window in a heat full of aggression, big time raising and loads of banter. Some ace faces played some of the most entertaining poker we have had the pleasure of witnessing. Oh, he's called blind. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's out of a Cold Club has done it! Back oh, of 10,000! My lord! What a comeback! I'm Jesse May. Welcome to the PartyPoker.net European Open. I'm joined by six-time former world snooker champion Steve Davis. Uh, Steve, you're a bit of a poker player as well. And uh, let's talk about raising today and aggression. Well, let's talk about aggression and what aggression isn't. It's not about the frequency of hands you see. That's whether you're tight or loose, how many flops you get to see. Aggression is not also about bluffing. Aggression is really about when you decide to play, how strongly you play and how much fear you put into your opponent. So it's about betting and betting strongly, possibly with second pair, not waiting and playing passively after the flop. So if you're going to be aggressive, how much should you bet? What size of your bet should your bet be? Well, enough that it really does scare the opposition and ask them a big question. And that is, to some, some degree, dependent upon what's in the pot in the first place. But really, if you can become a fairly conservative or a tightish, but, but also aggressive player, when you decide to put money in the pot, people think, wait a minute, he must have something. And if you can then get to that situation, then perhaps the next phase would be you can bluff on the strength of players fear you. Well, I mean, you practice what you preach. I remember watching the first time you ever played poker on TV, and uh, with really nothing more than aggression, you, you, you basically ran over the table selectively. Well, possibly that was with little knowledge as well. <laughs> as you learn knowledge, you, you learn fear as well. But obviously, you know, to the nth degree, uh, the ultimate form of aggression would be the raise, and that comes into another phase. But therefore, therefore with raising, you are asking an even bigger question of your opponent because for you to be able to raise, your opponent must have put a bet in in the first place. And when you then raise, you say to him, I don't care what you think you've got, I think I've got better, now what are you going to do? So that is really the nth degree of aggression. Speaking of raising, someone who raised the bar a bit himself in the poker world, 1988 world champion Phil Helmuth has this to say on the subject of raising before the flop. Let's talk about the size of the raise. The size of the raise can be really key because most people, a standard raise is three and a half X. So if the blinds are 50 and 100, you would come in for 350. If one person is called, you would come in for 450. That's the standard traditional way to play poker. Now, let's just suppose a lot of people at your table are calling your raises and you don't want a lot of calling. You're gonna have to raise even more. Conversely, let's suppose that you have a big hand like aces or kings and you feel like you have to make a raise, but you want some action. You can raise a little bit less with a hand like that. And you know, the size of your raise can really confuse people. Sometimes I'll make a huge raise with a strong hand because people aren't expecting it. Control your raises, use them to fool people. Thank you very much, Phil Helmuth. Well, last week's game, Steve, was all about raising and aggression. I mean, Dave Colcloth and the Mad Turk together uh, provided some of the well, they provided some of the most aggressive moments I think we've seen on television. Look at this hand here, Colcloth with the Ace Jack, and sure, I'll raise before the flop. The Mad Turk had limped into this hand before him, and now here comes Ugel over the top, all in with the King Jack hanging on a limb, and a uh, good move, you think? Colcloth can't call with the ace-jack. You can't get more aggressive than that, and that puts Colcloth into the think <coughs> tank. And you can see him having a think up there. What do you do? He must have such a great hand. All Dave had to do was call there, and he would have had usual uh, drawing so slim but uh, he said ace-jack, he, he just assumed that uh, Ugel was, was the way he played the hand, then the aggression at the end, just, just massive. If you put enough chips into the pot, especially if you've re-raised the razor, you're asking him a big question. I don't think you've got as much as I've got. What are you going to do now? You don't only have to have aggression with the worst hand, but also we saw an example last week with the best hand, and it was on the turn, and this was the Mad Turk, who may be the most aggressive poker player in Europe. Uh, on the turn here, 
he's bet out with a queen jack, and Paul Jackson with a flush draw and a pair has made a small raise. What does the Mad Turk do? Bish bosh, second pair he's got. It's the best, but how can Paul call for all his chips? You can't, and uh, you know, it's a very fine dividing line between being aggressive and being a kamikaze pilot. <laughs> and if you get the balance right, you are such a fearful player and nobody wants to mess with you. And that's exactly what's happened there. Love to see that tonight because it's one of the greatest things to watch in poker. And let's check out who's on the fences. Well, the players are round the table. Cards about to be in the air, so quick, close the fridge door and peel your eyes because we'll be right back with some Aces Poker. Well, the action's about to begin. Steve Davis and myself will be guiding you through. So let's get onto the table and see the first hand. We saw from Dave Colcloth earlier in this tournament some very loose and aggressive play during the first level, and then he tightened up later on. I, I guess people take uh, take the view that uh, with the blinds so low, it's sometimes nice to get in there and mix it up a little bit, uh, trying to accumulate chips. Yes, and I think if you do get off to a good start in any of these events, uh, it puts you in a relaxed frame of mind. Cool. Folded around this hand is Stephen Bovis, who uh, mm -hmm. is going to take on Joe Gretsch himself with the 10 deuce. Just called the 2000. And uh, Joe has not exercised his action. We're waiting for the flop here. Bottom. Check. 3,000. That's asking a big question of Bovis, okay. who, who doesn't believe that he's got either a king or an ace. Otherwise, perhaps he would have raised pre-flop. Perhaps that's the thinking there. Could be Check. a bad card for Joe Gretsch. Now, he was 6, bluffing. 000. Now he's made a pair, but he's still call. behind. He's just going to call him down. This spot's getting pretty big. 22,000 in there already. Check call again. Uh, you Check. wonder, <laughs> I was going to say how far Joe Gretsch is willing to go. You think he could have won it there with a bet on the river? <laughs> well, I think he'd have just called him. If he called him for the first two times, he was prepared to call him again. He just didn't believe he had a king or an ace, so he thought his ten was in front. So Stephen Bovis playing like a backstop there. Took all the balls that Joe Gretsch could muster. <coughs> and uh, I'm sort of sending out a signal there, don't bluff me. Well, Joe's taking a bit of a step backwards now. He lost 8,000 there on the bluff, but uh, he may have found out some information, which is that Stephen Bovis is not to be messed with. Or that you can bet at Pass. Stephen Bovis and he'll call him. Pass. That's even better, isn't it? <laughs> Pass. Pass. Folded around and Joe Pass. Gretsch providing all the action here. These first three hands is the third hand he's played from the small blind and the eight high is winning. Matt Shields are ready to go. Check. Pretty nice flop for Shields in a drawing sense. Pass. Yeah, if Joe Gretsch made a pair on either side, Matt would have made his straight. And the semi-bluff, as they Rebuy. call it, <laughs> has got Matt the pot. Rebuy. Matt's wife, Michelle, uh, has 
played on television once before, and she did quite well making the semifinal round, uh, winning a heat in a, in a prior television tournament. So Matt might feel like he's got a lot to live up to here. But Michelle is quite an impressive player. Well, he might have a lot to live up to because uh, all the players fill in the questionnaire beforehand to, to give some idea of their poker experience. One of the questions, what's the funniest thing you've ever seen at the poker day uh, table? Uh, Matt put down, my wife winning on TV. <laughs> Family rail building up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there were some top poker players who didn't find it funny at all. <laughs> they found it scary because Michelle ran them over. But we've got a pot brewing here. Joe Gretsch with a small raise from the button, and uh, he's found himself up against the Celtic Tiger, who's got the 8-9 suited. Well, two hands fairly similar, really. They have both missed the flop, though. So, breaks on. Check. And this one down to aggression. We'll see if Jim Britton wants to Wheel and deal. Can't really do anything there, can he? Well, you're looking, I might as well look as well, eh? Just in case. <laughs> this is all over. Jim Britton gives it up, and Joe Gresh takes one. He says, I think you were bluffing, but I'm not going to do anything about it. And uh, I guess that is some of the power yeah. of naked aggression. Well, who blinks first? Joe Gresh sort of setting his stall out that he is going to be the most aggressive player at the table. <laughs> <laughs> he's played the first four hands. And, uh, yeah, and he's, he's back exactly where he started off. Well, well, one chip less. Never knowingly put in a blind. Next week. Those yellow chips are worth a thousand each. The blues, two thousand apiece, and the reds are five thousand each, putting a total of six hundred thousand on this table. Raise. 6,000 total. Big-ish oh. hand for Shields, who's called without thinking about the possibility of an ace out there. Yeah, and, and there uh, it is. Robin Keston is called as well. This is an interesting hand, isn't it? It, it does show what you were saying. I mean, uh, Joe Gresh has raised every pot, so Matt Shields calling quickly, quickly with a hand that he... Oh, oh my! Grex got his... God, he's, he, well, when you he, he get a customer, that's the only problem. Well, Robin yeah. Keston's got a flush draw, and uh, he may think it's the best hand anyway, ace high. Little does he know that Joe Gresh has got a monster. 10,000. <coughs> does he raise or call? Matt Shield still in the middle, and uh, he'll give it up, but there's no way Robin's folding. No. Does he call this, or does he raise it? Raise it. Raise. <coughs> 40,000. There's your answer. Robin, a very experienced player, and uh, he's expecting this to be over here. He's going to be <coughs> very shocked. I think he's going to see an all-in. Well, it should be an all-in now, perhaps from Gretsch. It's a big, big raise, so therefore it's... Three raise, all-in, and a call. <laughs> Holy Toledo! Mm. This happened quick. <coughs> And Robin Keston a bit shell-shocked to find out not even his ace is a win here, Steve. He needs to catch a club and not pair the board. Three to one against, and Robin Keston all in. This pot, 205,000. <laughs> well, Robin Keston said he was a terrible tournament player and a great cash player, and he's hit that club. He sure did. Whether he's terrible or not doesn't really matter now. He may consider it was a bad move, but he's happy to see the club. The nut flush, the river, as far as Joe Gress is concerned, must pair the board. Yeah, it hasn't. It's 100. Okay, I'm just going to check. And Robin Keston, sort of the double-edged sword of, of giving a lot of action there from Joe Gretsch. Wait, well, you've got to think he's unlucky, really, in the end. He's hit. He's hit trip sixes. You, you can't do much more than that with a pair of sixes. You might have to go a bit. He was three to one favorite <coughs> when the money went in. And uh, sometimes you can set the track, you can spring it, and then the bear eats you. 91. I haven't played a hand. Yeah, you haven't. I think Joe Gretsch out. He's out. Oh, he was out chipped, was he? Look at that hand one more time. 
Joe Gretsch, the three sixes on the flop, devilish. The money went in. Robin Keston needed a club, and he caught it on the turn. And this is uh, the flush beating three of a kind, Steve. It's uh, early doors to our first casualty. Just shows you, you shouldn't play poker unless you can take a joke. And the joker, as he's called, walks out the door. Well, no surprises for seeing who's top of the tree with a bet frequency of 20%. Got double the amount of chips of anybody else still left in the tournament. It's interesting when you're talking about aggression, Jesse. Uh, one person shows some aggression, you decide you don't believe them. Another person shows some aggression, and you do. <laughs> it's very much on the feel of the moment. <laughs> Down to honest faces, <laughs> Joe Gretsch. He doesn't want to be trusted. There's been a raise from the button here. That was Stephen Bovis and uh, Matt Shields quickly in with the Jack-10 suited. Second time he's just called a raise before the flop. Check. That may have been what Matt Shields had in mind. Well, well. Check. I checked. Stephen Bovis would have been well Check. excused to bet there, Steve. Uh, Top two pair. Check, I checked. He smells danger, doesn't he? Sure does. We may get into trouble now. Possibly that nine has done him no favours, but then there's the possibility of a straight out. How does he get paid? How does he get 10, paid? <laughs> He's praying Bovis as a king. He is absolutely praying Bovis as a king. And, I mean, how, how does Stephen Bovis, he, he's not going to lose any money here. He's done so well to get away from that, really, hasn't he? <laughs> Unlucky there, really, for, for Matt as well. It was, uh, you would expect to have got something better out of that. No more money after the flop. <laughs> there he's with a, he's got a full house and he hasn't got back to his starting amount yet. He must be <laughs> gutted. <laughs> I would imagine. Not only that, but uh, head up in the pot, and the other player actually had a hand. He could have considered the best, Stephen Bovis. Uh, I don't know what he saw. Obviously, Stephen Bovis's game plan was to not believe Joe Grex and then believe everybody else and won't play <laughs> another hand. <laughs> the, the lemon throws away King Nine. Bovis with an ace. Cool. First to bet, just calls. Pass. Seeing if oh. anything else materialises. No Britain has him dominated with the five, or slightly dominated. He does. And they've let the queen in for a bit of action as well there. Six thousand in there, Check. and nobody's made nothing. So is this a sign? Aggression. The first to bet Check. wins it. Check. All checked. Got a bit quiet, hasn't it? Got a bit cagey now. Check. Check. <laughs> all checked. <laughs> it's just like they're all tigers watching the center. Ace high is winning right now. Check. Split pot. And the queen comes and nicks it. Both Pass. the aces fold. Pass. Robin Keston wins with the worst hand. <laughs> <laughs> He's horrible. Oh. I'll tell you what. Could have taken some action with that. I could have taken some action with that. <laughs> what a great line. I could have taken some action with that hand. Yeah, Queen Four. Yeah, all right. Let's check out the ranking of hands. Each five card poker hand falls into the official ranking of hands. At the bottom of the ladder is high card only. Just above that, one pair. Aces are the high pair. Two pair is higher still. Uh, three of a kind, the next one up. That's self-explanatory, also called a set. And then a straight is above three of a kind. That's five cards in a row of any suit. A flush is five cards of the same suit in any order. Full house is three of a kind plus a pair. Four of a kind, self-explanatory, really. And a straight flush is what you're looking for. That's five cards in a row, all of the same suit. Royal flush is top of the pops. That is a straight flush, ace high. Robin's been on the scene for quite a while. He counts uh, Gary Jones and, uh, well, he's one of his best friends. He's... Uh, 
knows all, Pass. and he's been on the high stakes scene for Pass. for some time. Call. Jim Britton with a hand. Call. Robin Keston. Check. Putting money in Pass. with anything at the moment. <coughs> Couple of jacks out. Could be interesting. This game has taken on the appearance of, of a very cagey affair, hasn't it? It might just be early. There's a there is an eight out there, isn't there? Check. Check. All checked. Once again, the problem in this situation is how do you get paid? Oh, you might Check. get paid now. Sorry. Oh, Jim Britton. What a hand he's just picked up. A full house. And nobody could perceive that. This could be another player walking out the door. <coughs> well, Jim's just called. Paul Murrell's got some outs to make the best hand here. Any jack, any king, and another Pass. eight. Anything else. And uh, you wonder how much Jim Britton can extract. His, his best bet, Steve, might, might have been to raise the turn here. Possibly, yes. Does Murrell think that possibly Jim Britton's got a king with a jack or a king with a... Oh, oh no. <laughs> Goodbye. That has that's... really slowed the action. Oh, that's a worry. 10,000. <laughs> What a, what a, <coughs> that's a worry for both players. I wonder if Jim Britton knows that he's bluffing. I think Merle thinks he's behind. <laughs> Why did Jim Britton call with a, on the, on the flop? Yeah. He must have had a king. Merle now thinks possibly he's got the worst mm -hmm. hand. Does he just call it? He's got a raise just for a bit of information. Cool. He does oh. think he's got the key. Nah, full house. Mm. Oh, very nice. <laughs> that is odd. The action slowed way down there. Eight's full Eight beating three's full. And Merle catching his card on the river. Little did he know. That yeah, that's what when saved him. Right, yeah. When he said very nice, he thought we'd lost. <laughs> he really did. Both players have a full house, but... When the hands get ranked, it's the three of a kind that means it. And threes full do not beat eights full of kings. So Paul Murrell has the best hand. Steve, that pot could have been much bigger than it ended up being, couldn't it have? Uh... Well, obviously Murrell didn't see he had the full house. Did he? Could, could he have missed that? I don't know. When, he, when, when Jim Britton said full house, he went very nice. <laughs> not very nice, I've got a bigger one. Yeah, yeah. Did he miss it? He had a full house. <laughs> wow. It never occurred to him. I tell you what, when you get on the television tables, I've been there, you, sometimes your brain goes completely out the window. And Jim Britton, counting yourself a little unlucky. Raise. Perhaps you're right there, Jesse. That raise before the flop may have... Pass. Well, actually, as it turned out, he probably would have been walking out the door, but... Yeah. Raised all in. No, he's lost the plot. <laughs> he's had enough. Oh, my. A pair of fours limped in. The raise is only to 7,000, and Britain has come over the top for about 80. It's going to probably be okay, but um, if he's run into a big hand, 71,000 total. There's nothing wrong with doing that. That's a very strong bet in many ways. It's not losing the plot at all. It's just uh, trying to get things going, I suppose. And he'll show it for a bit of advertising. He was using a sledgehammer when a toothpick or a uh -huh. tweezer would have done. Jim Britton. Well, I think there was a little steam coming out of his ears there from the last hand. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's an emotional guy. <laughs> that's just different degrees, degrees of losing the plot, that's all. Uh, I don't want to drop any more, do I, Steve? <laughs> Jim Britton, well known online as a sort of a personality there. They call him the Celtic Tiger. And uh, he can type as fast as he can talk, that's for sure. But uh, he's had quite a lot of success there on the internet and uh, has also had a bit of success Great. in the live play as well. He made a final table in. Uh, a European tournament uh, just last month. Call. Pass. There's been a raise of 6,000 here by Jim oh. Britton. Pass. And Robin Keston has called quickly behind him with a pocket pair. I see your eyes now. Thinking Can't read them, with the jack four. Not too sure what he's thinking that strongly about. Pass. Trying to talk himself into getting in the game, perhaps. 
<laughs> so it's king 10 unsuited against a pair of sevens. I don't know who you like in this matchup, but Robin Kesson does have the advantage of position for the entire time he's in this tournament against check. Jim Britton. He'll let Jim act first. Check, check, check. Uh, and uh, it's going check, check. This pair of sevens looking good right now. Check. Yeah. Can Jim Britton bring himself to bet in this situation? <laughs> Robert guessed it's very suspicious. <laughs> I think if Jim Dow does put any money in, he'll get called. No. Okay. Not bothering. Okay. He's very worried very nice. about. I mean, it seemed almost like Robin Keston thought that if, if he bet out there, he might be facing another all-in raise. That it, it's, it's almost like that's what Jim was threatening with the last hand, and uh, Robin uh, just decided to play it very defensively, which is interesting considering his stack size. Well, those three cards are good. <laughs> Let's take a look at how the blinds work in Texas Hold'em. Every poker hand begins with the placing of the button and the posting of the blinds. The button is a disc that represents the nominal dealer. The blinds are forced bets to get the action started. The player to the left of the button puts in the small blind. The player on his left puts in the big blind, usually double the small. Action for this first round of betting will move to the left of the big blind. The button moves to the left with each hand, and the blinds are raised throughout the game to keep the action going. Oh. Looking a bit, look, just looking a bit frustrated with things at the moment is Jim. Uh, ace four of spades mm -hmm. just called, and the queen ten right. raises up. Robin Keston doing very well with the queen in his more. hand at the moment. <laughs> the lemon Pass. throws <coughs> away ace seven. Bovis gets Pass. rid of another queen. This was the original limper. Robin's made kind of a big raise here. I mean, uh, oh. not a huge raise, but 8,000 more, four times the bet. Uh, yeah. I don't think he was looking for action there. No, and the trouble for Shield is uh, what happens if an ace does come now? He, he can't believe he's in front. That's a problem. It certainly is. Uh, I'd be much happier with the spade flush, and he's well on his way here. 15,000. Well, Robin Kesson's got an open-ended straight draw, eight or king to make him the nut straight. When he raised with a flush draw beforehand, there's not much oh. difference between a flush draw and a straight draw in the amount of cards with, a, with one card to come. There's, there's not. Little does Robin know that if it comes a spade, though, eight or king, he'll be in jeopardy. 15,000. He's bet again. He is in front, so he may think it's a bluff, but... It isn't actually. It's the winning hand as we look at it. Matt Shields, bet once, got called, <laughs> bet again. Well, when you've called once, to some degree, you've wasted the money if you don't call again. It gets more expensive. He has got the money to waste, so to speak. But the pot size, 66,000, he's been Asked a question, and it's it's roughly the right answer to try and hit his straight. But of course, a couple of the spades wouldn't hit, wouldn't help him. So Pass. goodbye, and that was the buzzer. I think the blinds are going up. And Keston, who's still in front, the loosest. Jim Britton down to 66 out, 66,000. It's easy for me to say. Robin Keston still in front. Yeah, as far as bet frequency goes, Robin Keston has been playing by a factor of two, twice as many hands as the next competitor. Two rather attractive hands limping in. Queen Jack suited the pair of nines, and Jim Britton, who's got a bag full of beach balls. The pair of nines, Stephen Bovis, 
doesn't feel like getting too aggressive with those. They're medium pairs. They can get you into trouble, and they would have got you into trouble because... Six thousand. Six thousand. queen is now leading. Four. Well, Elvis doesn't believe. <laughs> no, I suppose he's got Five. some right to not believe, but trouble is now putting some money. And what happens if a blank like a two comes? And Merle bets again a small amount. Well, the king may slow him down a bit. Check. Huh, Stephen Bovis. Well. Yeah. Eight thousand. Cool. Four. Funny thing is, by just calling there on the on the flop, I mean Bovis has uh, sort of opened up the possibility that he may have a seven. He's going to have to bet big now, Bovis, to get eight thousand. Eight thousand. Moral off this hand. <laughs> wow, this has gone backwards and forwards all over the place. I, I give up. Bluff, double bluff, <laughs> double de bluff. Now what do you do? Look at the pot size, 50,000, and, and Merle's only bet eight. I mean, uh, it, it smacks almost of a defensive bet more than anything. There's oh. yep. there's no way, I was going to say, this, there was no way that Stephen Bovis could have folded there. But Which of these nuts has got the most guts? We'll see after this. Oh, a couple of weeks ago where Mickey Wernick got his way to 200,000 without ever winning a big pot and never oh. turning over a hand. And Paul Merle is certainly in that oh. mode. Oh. Right. And Bovis is a bit hotted up lately, just limping in to Matt Shields' big blind. They've both missed the flop. Check. Check. I think Steve Bovis is just trying to hit something. He's just a bit... No, I wouldn't say on tilt so much as just hoping things go right nice. after the flop. Well, look at that situation. 12, Bovis in front, but how can he put any more money in? Hmm. He's checked it twice. You don't want to be calling, do you? The yep from <laughs> Bovis <It> means capitulation. <laughs> so Matt Shields has been a real silent thief. I, I don't think he's actually made the best hand yet tonight, although he did have a, f a full house at one point. But uh, most of the pots he's won, I think uh, over half of them, have been uh, with the worst hand on the draw, on the semi bluff, just uh, chipping and chopping away. And uh, no surprise, he's from the Midlands. Yes. 39 years old, born on the same day as Wild Bill. <laughs> I assume Wild Bill Hickok, 29th of the 4th. And sadly, Matt, with no nickname uh, to speak of, uh, if the questionnaire that the players are asked to fill out beforehand is anything to go by, he's without nickname, which is a very sad affair in the world of poker. <laughs> really, you're nobody if you have a, no nickname. Something he needs to go out and acquire as quick as he can. How about Marlboro Red? <laughs> no advertise. <laughs> we've uh, we've built a little pot here, by the way. A couple of limpins and the blinds, four thousand apiece, making sixteen thousand. There's a few attractive hands out there. Something that gets people excited. And there's some big hits here. Well, that's a case nine out there. Three players have got the nine, but Britain has the top two alongside it. That's a marvellous hand Check. for Britain. How does he play it? 15. Fast. Pot size oh. bet. Perhaps too much for any customers, but he's got to stop anybody with a flush draw. Oh, and Bovis is cool. having a little bit of a confrontation here with Britain, and he's going to be coming off much the worst of it. Shields has the nine as well. With uh, it's not really a better hand than Stephen Bovis's. It's just a it's a nightmare for both <laughs> of them, really, isn't it? Yeah. Funny thing is, there are no more nines in the deck, but uh, a oh. king would probably see Bovis getting all the money. And do you think the hump is involved here? Well, 
There was a little bit of words earlier. Looks like they may have been carried over, or he just thinks that nine is good enough on its own. Well, that four, uh, that would have made Paul Merle three fours. That could have really got the mustard flowering. Check. Oh, he's really put the brakes on here, Jim Britton. Nice. Two pair. Did you find that odd that Jim Britton slowed down like that? Well, he thinks he's, he's furious with himself, absolutely furious with himself. You can survive for a bit longer, and that's just what Steve Bovis is doing. Morrill out in front, 178, but uh, everything very much still to play for here. Bovis on the big blind, so he doesn't have to put any more money in for a while. Keston back to getting rubbish. Pass. Pass. On the big blind, what does Bovis do? Probably raise. And hope he doesn't run into a steamroller. Yeah, I mean, Stephen has really come alive this level, and uh, right. he's looking to get action. I think it's a big raise here. 20,000 total. Uh-oh. Re-raise. Re-raise. Mm, and the strongest better around the table stamps his authority once again over the line sticking plenty of chips in now it's a deep red reach and that puts Bovis I would imagine all in more, well, not far off it Pass. and where does Bovis go nowhere Pass. tough decision Stephen Bovis had stuck a little under half his chips in on the race and uh, that was probably intended to get no action Instead, all it's done is really cost him. Do you think he was a bit too aggressive there with the, the Queen 7, or is it just a bit of bad luck that he ran into a big hand? Well, he was on the button. I suppose in this format, that's the place to raise from. I heard some of the players talking recently, and they were, <laughs> they were saying that, you know, the button for so long has been considered a stealing position. And uh, everybody's picked up on it now, so that people just expect when the button raises that uh, they've got nothing. So now the new stealing position is one off the button. <laughs> Raise. Raise. 18. 18,000 total. Well, he folded ace-queen earlier, but that was because of a raise. This time he's the first to speak. So he, he raises, away. and he's found a pair of sevens. The classic confrontation, unless somebody else has got anything better. 35,000 total. A re-raise is not much, and Matt Shields... A decision, but not a big one. A raise and a re-raise with ace-jack. <coughs> you can't really be going anywhere with this, other than downhill. That seems to be exactly what Shields is working out. Pass. So we've seen Pass. an ace out. I don't think... Oh, Robin Keston. Oh, wow. <laughs> All in. All in. That's a massive bet. And the verbal AI, the oh. key for Robin Keston here, is not Stephen Bovis's hand, but it is Paul Merle. And that's the man who he's put under pressure right now. Well, that's a very, very interesting bet. And one that asks an enormous question of Merle the Lemon. He can't really, he can't really do it, can he? Bovis is going to be thrilled to see Robin Keston's yeah. ace-king because the alacrity with which Keston put him in signals a pair bigger than sevens. And with three aces out, Steve, uh, Bovis' sevens are looking pretty strong. Oh, you got deuce three or something? Yes, only four cards in the pack that can help Keston. He wouldn't know that, of course. He hasn't seen any of these cards. He must think he's 50-50, but he's not. But he, he has gotten... Uh, a very good turn of luck here, which is that he'll have the opportunity to almost triple through if these sevens can hold up. Although he's all in, is Stephen Bovis, and banishing the big cards from the board. That's good. Well, there's a couple of sevens in the pack as well, so really, Keston's not got too much going for him. If you took the sevens out of the equation and took two of the kings out of the equation, then there's only two cards, effectively, for each turn from now on in. Three to one. Oh, I see. And that has dampened the spirits. And he spade now would knock Stephen Bovis out. Oh, 
<laughs> Black, but the right one. <coughs> two sevens and two fives holding up. And uh, Stephen Bovis is going to be here for a while. But Bovis re-raised and then saw Keston stick them all in. But the seven's good from beginning to finish. Two pairs beaten one. There's five minutes and 57 seconds. Now that all the clatter is cleared, Steve, Bovis is looking very healthy. Pass. Well, he must be feeling a lot better now. Pass. He's moved off the bottom, and his good friend, Jim Britton, is Pass. now bottom of the pack. King Jack of Diamonds, after losing with Thank Ace you, King awesome. suited, straight back into the fray cool. with a raise and a call, and it's all getting a bit changey gear type of thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pretty big raise that Robin just made, and uh, Merle is called quickly with a hand that... Uh, does he think he's steaming? That's a good question. What happens here will be very interesting. Okay. Robin chooses not to okay. fire. He's praying for a king is what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a jack. All in. All in. Oof. That's a big bet if the other guy's got a queen and was trapping. Pass. He's a little like a snapping turtle, isn't he? He's, he stays in his shell, Robin, but uh, he, he comes out with the big bites. Dangerous, dangerous, Keston. He is dangerous, and actually it's quite interesting. Some of the bets, the all-in bets, that you don't seem to see some of the really top players committing all their chips um, he says himself that he doesn't think he's a great tournament player, but a better cash player. Those all-in bets, cash-wise, I suppose, are much more fit frightening than, than in a tournament. Right. You can always go back to your pocket to get some more cash. As you're walking out the door after an all-in that was a wrong decision, you can't buy back in again. Pass. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very tough adjustment to make, I think, for, for a lot of players because uh, you don't see that Pass. many poker players who are successful Pass. in both tournaments and cash games. And there, Robin taking a breather, folding the ace from the button. As it is, he would have been well in front. Check. Check. Check, check. And uh, Bovis, he was saying, put me out of my misery. Now he can only get himself in trouble. They both made the sixes. But <laughs> this is good. Well, oh, that's an interesting raise because he's behind. 25,000 more, 35,000. But that doesn't mean to say that this raise won't get him over the line. And the fact that Murrell's only got third pair means he's really obligated to fold. Hard to tell what Bovis was thinking there. Does he know he was bluffing? He, he, he did that so quick and so sure. It was a, it was either a world-class player or, or sheer lunacy. Exactly. This and uh, which one do you think that was there, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. I'll tell you what. I think I think Bovis is just determined not to go down calling or crawling, and uh, like he's he's got a lot of fire inside it. He's 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 got. I don't know if he's got the skill, but he's got the will. <laughs>
We may well call him. He's going to have a little count up now, a little roll call. Well, Jim Britton has stuck 40,000 in of his 70, which, Steve, uh, means he's got less back than he has in the pot. And you might take that to mean he's pot committed no matter what. 20, 30 odd. Hard to imagine him folding. So it's 40 to play, yeah? Yeah, 40. Roughly, Steve Bovis would be left with 25,000 should this all go pear shaped. Let's just have a look what he's got left. And he's going to put him all in. I'll call. It is, it is a brave raise by Stephen Bovis, isn't it, Steve? I mean, uh, obviously we know he's well in front, but uh, he could be facing a pair or an ace-king would be the worst case. Yes, but he, he certainly has the possibility that Jim Britton was, uh, was trying to make something happen, which was definitely true. And the queen you won't like to see from Bovis. One of his cards is now dead. Yeah. Britain all in. Both these players playing a crucial pot, which is over 145,000, or exactly there. And the 10. Oh my! Oh, over on the <laughs> flop. <laughs> There's no way out. The Celtic Tiger's been silenced. That last hand, uh, it was unfair, but from the flop, it was over. A pair of aces and the nut flush draw, or the second nut anyway, uh, really ended Jim Britton's hopes. And at the end, one pair beating ace high, four way. <laughs> Where else besides poker would these four guys be sitting around? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't mistake them for... I don't know. Mountaineers. <laughs> well, they are. Oh. Well, there's an ace going in the bin there. Could have raised with that ace three. But once again, you raise oh. and you committed to some degree. So sort of a, an, an unbidden rhythm going on, wasn't mm. it? Uh, I mean, last round... Uh, we have a blind situation going on. The queen deuce versus the deuce seven. Never have a, has a deuce seemed so vital. Bottom pair. Now, how strong will Shields play this? Yes, he is aggressive. And I would imagine it will pay off. Watch all these hands in you realize how, how valuable it would be if, if you could be sitting at that table and see the other players' cards. It would make it a much different game, wouldn't it? Uh, it's a big advantage to have. What, if you, if you could see the other player's card? What yeah. are you trying to say? That if you could see the other player's card, it would be a help? <laughs> it, would, it, would certainly, it would certainly go a long way. <laughs> how long have you been commentating for now, Jesse, in this game? <laughs> have you just realized that? Or is this something that sort of dawned on you last night? Or? Matt Shields tightest player around the table. Not much to choose between the other three. Shields under the gun here, five and 10,000. And the Queen oh. Jack. Oh. He's just limped in. We have not seen him do this. And Robin Keston gave a very odd look to his right, says, that smells rotten. Oh. He was stopped. He stopped and thought about a raise. I thought then, then call. Oh. Moral so calls make up the big blind. <laughs> Bovis has got the big hand. Certainly short-handed, it's a big hand. A pair of nines, you've got to sort of raise it up the ladder a bit. Yeah, he doesn't believe cool. that the call meant strength from... Oh. <coughs> well, Shields. Shields has called. He's got himself involved in a hand that perhaps he wouldn't now want to be in, but he's got two overcards. It's, it's, it's a massive pot, 90,000 in there. And the jack's hit. It's top pair for Matt Shields. 
What timing he's got. Uh-oh. Call quickly! And the look from Bovis. He knows he's beat. He'll be surprised at how it happened. Because from Matt, from Stephen Bovis's point of view, Steve, uh, he's done the right thing. Couldn't expect Shields to hit the flop, but Shields has hit, and this pot 330,000. Stephen Bovis is all in, and this could be the pot of the of the heat. Well, it is for sure. Well, disappointing for Bovis there. The worst feeling in the world when you say all in, and the other guy just calls immediately. Yeah, it really is. I mean, there's not much room for doubt there, is there? But you, there's two cards to beat. You. Only a nine here. And the three jacks. Salt in Stephen Bovis's wounds. And Matt Shields played out of the box a little bit that hand and won it. The chip leader doubled up. The nines were good until the flop. And uh, the money went in big and hard. Three jacks in the end beat two pair. There'll be more on this floor. Join us after the break here at thepartypoker.net European Open. The line, his shoulders heaving a bit. He's very alert. He makes me look like Captain Charisma around the time of the table. Another 20. Murrell getting busy when he needs to. But he's got a problems again. Shields just flat calls. Murray becomes uncomfortable in his seat. Oh dear. Check. 50. Oh. Well, it was a very good check by Paul Murrell. He could have done the lot. And uh, Matt Shields, his style of being just a soft mattress for the chips is uh, working very well. He's very hard man to, to put on a hand, isn't he? Yeah, he goes to the ropes, soaks up a bit of punishment, prepared to soak a bit up, and then see what happens after that. If his opponent's not strong enough, he starts delivering a few punches. Yeah. It's getting more serious by the moment. Matt Shields, no. you know, I mean, if you think about the pots that Matt Shields has been in, he has not missed many opportunities to bet if it's to him with no action already spoken for. Once he decides to play. Oh, this is. Well, Marl's raising 30,000. He really hasn't got that many chips left to play with. Shields has found a big hand. And this is Marl's chance. It's a 50 50 chance. And he needs it desperately. 50-50, yeah. <coughs> but Shields has chips back. So this is the free yeah. bullet that Matt has in his gun to take out Paul Merle. Okay. Slightly leading with the two sevens, but not that many wits in it. Yeah. Good. Thanks. <coughs> a nice gesture there. Uh-oh. The seven would be the key card now. Matt Shields, any 10, any ace, any king, and he will be three quarters of the way to victory. <coughs> Game on if the big cards don't come. Merle's leading. Seven's ahead. Spin the wheel. And that deuce <coughs> has kept Paul Merle in his seat. Nice little double up there. Yes. Hasn't done too much damage to Matt Shields. But it gives Merle some breathing space. And now all the players desperately need cards. With three players in the game. Well, the same hand that he re-raised with, he throws away. Raised to 50,000 total. Oh, here we go. We've all off. Yeah, we've seen several pocket pair overcard matchups here tonight, Stephen. Yet again, classic hold'em <coughs> matchup. And Robin Keston in a situation where uh, if he doesn't hit the ace or the jack, he's, he's going to be out of the tournament. Yes. 
Should he hit the ace or the jack, they'll swap places in chips. And there it is. Only a six now. Or possibly a board making straight. A queen and a jack can help shields. Banga banga boon. Only two sixes in the deck to knock Robin Keston out. Matt Shields is hoping for one of them. Anything else? And Bingo is doubling through. <laughs> Keston becomes chip leader. Yeah. And there's a little smile. Again, <laughs> he claims he has a heartbeat. <laughs> and it's altered things. That is just poker. You have to take those on the chin. No, oh, doing quite well, really. Maybe feeling a bit aggrieved, but uh, that's one of the things about poker. If you've if you've got Pass. several barrels in your gun, you can lose pots mm -hmm. like that and still be Pass. in the tournament. Well, Keston getting very busy. Now he's chip leader, raising from a stronger position, perhaps. Thirty-five thousand more, fifty total. Well, unfortunately for him, he's run into a a very big hand. We raise all in. <laughs> we're back we're back to the flick of the hand I'll tell and you <laughs> I mean Robert Gaston might, might start thinking that he's going to have to stop bluffing Paul Murrow this Paul time Paul Paul's Paul. got a real hand but Paul. he's <laughs> every time Robin's gotten out of line Merle has slung the whip down and uh, he, f he feels obligated to do a long dwell up. <laughs> yes, the first bit of. No, it's a tremendous bit of acting now. It's <laughs> coming along. Ah, oh, it's gone. Uh, you can give it the full, the full Monty, just a little. Excellent. <clears throat> little screen test. Be nice for Keston now if you could pick up a big hand and raise Paul Morrill. That's what you'd be thinking next time he does it. I'm going to make sure I've got a good one. There is Paul Morrill's a worm. It's his chip history, and he has been up, down, and around, but never as high as this. And on the back of the over the top maneuver, he's not far from the chip lead. In fact, he has the chip lead. And to some degree, that doesn't hurt Matt Shields to level out the other two. Makes it more hurtful for them if they have to go all in against him. Pass. <coughs> Raise. Raise. 60 to play. Murrell getting very busy. Total. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He is. Pass. He's got play in him. He's... Uh, he seems to have worked out a size of raise that has taken Matt Shields off one of the elements of his game. The, the, the raises are too big for Shields to call and have anything left for the flop. Don't know if that's intentional or not, Steve, but uh, he stayed out of confrontation anyway. Well, certainly Matt Shields' present position with 122,000, he hasn't got so much room for manoeuvre. He doesn't, does he? It's shields now that Pass. needs a good hand. Pass. But he's got patience. Round and round they spin. And uh, these players have been battered and bruised in equal quantities uh, of the three remaining, I think. Uh, they've all lost their share of 50 50 propositions. I think it feels kind of fair. Matt Shields might have something to say about that. Yes, Matt could feel slightly aggrieved he didn't win one of those. That's a nice hand to get. 50 to play. Raised to 50,000 total. With the words 50 to play. He just hopes that somebody's got a hand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> marvellous. Perfect. <laughs> Pass. 
50 to buy 22 again. <clears throat> yeah, that's been a, a good little equation for Matt Shields. 50 to buy 22. You say, and uh, you could nearly make a living off that proposition. Well, the frequency of which, with, with which two people will fold every time you stick 50 in, from a math perspective, I haven't got a clue whether it's right or not, but I'm sure enough times people fold to make it worthwhile. I think you have to. This is one of his raising hands, isn't it? No, it's not. Pass. Cool. All in. Cool. Paul Murrell calls. Wow. And Shields goes all in. Did Murrell, Dad, did Merrill know that there was a, a good hand out there? How lucky was that? He, he may have been playing to trap. Yeah, and it's turned out <laughs> so fortunate. Much more 22. Yep. Oh, he's thinking. Surely Pass. not. Pass. That was a bit odd, wasn't it? Yeah, trying to trap. Can we switch the game to low ball? Please. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robin yeah. Keston play low ball. Uh, <laughs> so, there was a they play a they play a low ball world championship in Las Vegas. <laughs> player got to the final table one year and he said, "So what do I do? I don't know how to play low ball." Someone told him, "It's easy. Just pretend you're running really bad." pretty obvious to know oh, and yeah, well. understand what low ball is for anybody who doesn't know the variation of poker <laughs> the worst hand you could get wins the pot see what happens when you winch winch to win it's working <laughs> I think the devil fish said he so Keston in the small blind right now. Still three left. These chips have been sliding and diving around the table. And uh, all in. Raised all in. each of the three is a few chunks less. All in now with the pocket fours. That has taken the play away from Robin Keston, and he may be glad about that. Well, he has no need to put any chips in. There's no point in really risking can keep out of confrontation. 145. Yeah. Yep. It's one thing. Uh, it's uh, so one thing, Steve, to, to come over the top with a small pocket pair like threes, but to call with it is uh, yeah. this is dangerous. Yeah. But this, this is this is a very dangerous thing to do here to even consider. Yes. Really, and very well folded. What were you up against? Yes. If you don't put any chips in, you're not losing any, other than your blinds. I don't know again, haven't I? Hope it's again, again. Mind you, would we have been saying that if uh, Shields has had the threes and he'd have had the fours, we'd have been going, <laughs> well, well, he should be calling immediately. <laughs> well, it's nice to play guard, isn't it? <laughs> it's a marvellous position, knowing all the cards, isn't it? Whoever thought of this uh, glass tables? They've been playing three-handed here for about two levels now, and uh, there doesn't seem to be much between them, Steve. I mean, uh, there's not much quarter given here. Raised to 60. Raised to 60,000 times. That's a big raise. Plus. All, all in. in. Oh, he's done it. All on. in. Cool. And here we cool. go again. Shields through a third time lucky. Yeah, we saw this. looking at. It, it's, it's unbelievable, really. Or it's Shields' th third 50-50 shot. Ace or Jack, it's Matt Shields all in. He hit the Jack. And that has cut Robin Keston in half if the two Jacks hold. Keston with two nines to boot. And one card to do it in. Here's the river. That is the second time this evening. Matt Shields has hit made three jacks on the river. The two were enough. 
166. And uh, exactly right. 167. Those 50 50 propositions are no fun, are they? Shields is up to chip leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you think you're unlucky every time you lose a 50 50 and, and you don't consider you're lucky when you win one, you shouldn't be playing poker. But you've got to look at Shields and say, well, that's his third one in quite quick succession. He was due to hit some cards. We've seen Pass. some short stacks so far this tournament, but Robin Keston seriously short, basically in a situation where he has. Raise. Well, he's got. He's got a third of his chips in. It's better than my average hand. This tournament. Big blind. A lot better than my average hand. And uh, mathematically, he's probably not in the uh, worst shape in the world. <sighs> So it would look pretty ugly if these cards got turned over. It's about the sixth best hand I've had. <laughs> he's a bit of a character, isn't he? <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's fascinating to watch. He's been great entertainment in his own way. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan went out on a 9-4. I mean, you could say, you know, he w but he put them in with his left hand because he is ambidextrous. <laughs> it's been a bit of a famous hand. It doesn't have a name, but it, it, it may deserve one. Could just become the oh. Keston. He's called. Robin Keston got a chance his luck, and and Steve, there is an argument for it. He's yeah, two he's live cards and they're suited. <laughs> <laughs> he's got fifteen thousand in, and uh, a double up here would put him up to a hundred and ten thousand, which uh, with only fifty-five thousand, I mean the blinds coming around would destroy you anyway. So, unfortunately for him, he now needs to hit two cards. He needs a nine, and then a nine, or a nine and a four. Oh, a nine yeah. will do it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, any nine, any four, or any eight. Now, it's given a couple more outs. Keston's got them. Are they in the deck? Are they on the bottom? Are they in the middle? Oh, they are. He's got the eight. Sorry, <laughs> coming. Sorry. You can't get rid of these three. They're around forever. Fifty-five. It is what it is. And uh, Robin Keston went down into the dank and dirty tunnel of two spades, nine high, to take the pot. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack did the damage. Only one card of Keston's plays. But that was enough. Lines 10 and 20,000. This is where we'll separate the men from the Mices, I do oh. believe, or at least the big cards cool. from the small oh. ones. Oh, oh, Matt Shields. Did he just call? He did. He's, this is the first trap of this nature we've seen this evening. Oh, he's up against a bit there of a drawing is. hand. And Robin Keston has avoided the first precipice. Let's see if he hangs himself on the second. He must recognize yeah. that this is a bit out of order. <laughs> it is the yeah. first time Matt Shields has limped in all, all evening long. I wonder if an eight's going to help him. <laughs> it certainly would, wouldn't it? 25. That's a small bet. Old. It was a very cleverly <laughs> laid trap by Matt Shields, but Robin Keston didn't fall for it. And uh, Shields is pulling everything out of the arsenal here to try and get the others to bite on his rope. Matt Shields is... He has shown a propensity to be able to... Can he oh. slow play this? He nice. can't really, can he? He's 50. 50 the blinds have gone up, so he's 50 to buy 30. Oh, and the same hand. <laughs> All, in. All in, call, or perhaps not. Who knows? I think he's probably got to. Yeah, I don't think I don't think this is much of a raise at all. Oh. Although Shields is giving it a bit of a dwell up. He wants to know how much it is, and that's fair. 40, 50, 55,000 more. Well, there's flush potential out there. Call. 
Nobody's dominated anybody in the suit department. Whereas this is officially, I think, the cruelest way a person can get knocked out of a tournament. Same hand and four of a suit on board. All suits are represented here, but unless four of one come, and uh, free roll advantage goes to Kester. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me, would it? Uh, oh, he is. Oh, this is, this <laughs> is hard. <laughs> Any diamond to Robin Kesson has doubled time, through in a most unlikely fashion. Queen of Arts. Oh, Queen of Arts. Now you've got to carve all that up, isn't it? Well, that won't have done. <laughs> Matt's heart awesome. rate any good mm. at all there. I, I, like, I like my draw. Hmm? Yeah. Is that I'll the bead of sweat I see on his forehead? <laughs> if you didn't guess. No, it's painful, isn't it? It's painful. I knew that was going to happen to one of us, It's it? painful. Well, actually, I didn't think it was going to happen, but it's painful. There's a lot of ways to lose a poker tournament. That would be no fun. I did that to somebody in Ireland once called Norman. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Storm and Norman, was Storm and Norman. <laughs> Matt Shields still on top, over half the chips in play. And Paul Merle, Robin Kest, child play, fighting over scraps at the bottom. Back to the drawing board here for Keston. Another good hand. Is it worth all in or is it worth a raise? It's not far short of worth an all in, really. Might as well. Raised all in. Fold. Not much movement there. Fold. Is there uh, 10 and 20,000 are the blinds, and Robin Kesson only had about 115. He's uh, it's pretty much do or die. <clears throat> it's sort of sort of becomes like, uh, you know, it, it's tough making that leap, putting your chips across the line. I mean, with practice, I guess it becomes easier, but it's always, must always feel like just sort of jumping over the cliff without getting to look out below. It's uh, cool. Cool. We haven't well, seen Marl that. Well, calls with the King-10. Called with King-10 before. Is that a trap? <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know if it's a trap or just a call. <laughs> I suppose it's a very good hand to have, really. With just. Hold. But if somebody has an ace, perhaps you can get away with it, get away from it yeah. rather. And Queen nine. Here's a couple of interesting <laughs> matchups. I mean, if Paul Merle had gone all in, you would assume that he would have won this pot. And now you would assume he would have won this pot. Well, now he may trap Robin know. for his chips. Twenty thousand. <coughs> mm, does he call? Call. Yes, he calls. <laughs> they may have set the alarm bells off in Robin Keston's head. Queen or nine is what he's looking for. Will he bet if nothing comes? Oh, that's a monster. Now what do you do? <laughs> oh, baby. He's Another like little him. bet. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Another little bet. Oh, not too big. <clears throat> Forty thousand. He's scared to open his mouth. He think he, he thinks he might sing. <laughs> cool. Cool. Had to cool. really, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he knew he had two pair and a gut shot. It's all going over the line now. Keston has gotten Merle all in, or vice versa. There's not much between them. A jack would be helpful for Merle. Had to be a jack, king, or ten. They'll count him down. Merle might be out. Mm -hmm. And Steve, he, he's played such a great game, Paul Merle. Was was it... Just unfortunately cruel. Perhaps you could argue that he should have raised before the flop. I mean, but, you know, but that's only in hindsight and only sitting here talking, really. Yeah, and if, if the queen or nine hadn't come, he, he was liable to win a big one, I guess. Cheers, thanks, Marty. Yeah, cheers, mate. Also, possibly could have raised oh, after cheers. the flop. You know, all these decisions come into play, but really, overall, he played a great game of poker. Unfortunately, he's out the door. The money in on the turn. By that time, Paul Merle, two kings, but Robin Keston, sneaky, sneaky with the two pair, and it held up. Queens over nines. Paul.
Is it true you've only been playing poker 18 months? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, I mean, where have you gotten all this experience from? Uh, probably playing 10 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> so. How did you feel about that game? Are you, do you regret the last hand? I mean, um, I mean, we're shorthanded. I've hit top pair. Maybe I should push all in on the, f on the flop to protect it. Um, but then when the queen comes, I've still got outs. I, I, I thought he had two pair. Um, but I know I've still got a gut shot plus any king plus any ten, so I've got another sort of nine cards to it or something like that. So it is what it is. A any thoughts on uh, who's going to come out on top between Robin and Matt? Um, I couldn't honestly tell you. I think it's a coin flip now. I think they're both playing well, and uh, I think it'll just be one of those all-in scenarios again, the sevens against an ace jack or something. Those hands, those hands, and by the grace of God, Matt Shields. Needs but to seal the deal. But he has to twirl a little Robin Heston first, who in his own mind has some work to do. And uh, that's pretty much as bitter a pill as you can swallow, even Steven. Isn't that just about level. <laughs> it does. But no matter which way you slice it. Well, for all of the ups and downs that have happened, both players now have an equal footing to try no. and leave us some advantage. Matt Shields with a decent looking hand there. If he knew how far he was ahead, he may have been tempted to raise. Not so far ahead now in one respect is that Keston's on a big 50. draw. 50,000. Whether he'd be tempted to put any money in after that sizable bet is another matter. Yeah, an all-in would certainly win it here. But does Robin Ooh. know that? Wow, nice move. Very tough for Matt Shields to call here. Well, he's got some gambling in, in him as he cast in there. That's a superb move. It certainly forces the issue. If Shields had top pair, perhaps he wouldn't hesitate. 230,000. He couldn't, can't really get involved oh. at all. That was the first move of that fashion. That Robin Kesson has made. We saw him move on a flush draw against Joe Gresh oh so long ago. But this had much more of an air of finality to it, didn't it? He could have gotten himself in terrible trouble. Yes, he could have, but he didn't. And if he gets that flavor of betting going, perhaps he can put the scare tactics on that shield. It all depends on the cards, though, of course. Yeah, it doesn't take much to separate in head-up play, and that little move with a five high was, uh, was quite spectacular, really. Hold. Matt has not gotten really any good hands since they've gotten head-up. I think Robin has won every pot, which is a nice bit of speed to be showing now. So uh, he's quickly trying to work out how far ahead he is. It's about 400 to 200 now, which uh, starts to become, what do you say, a free shot. Matt Shields has to close this deal to go forward to the semifinal stages. Call. Raise. Raise. 50 more. Oh, they've got the same. 70 yeah. turtles. Well, and that raise would probably be enough. Hold. Even though it was a free roll to some degree for Robin Keston with the spades. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jack Ten suited is, is is one of those special hands, Steve, because uh, it's it's a hand that is actually favored over an ace rag ever so slightly. Jack Ten suited, but um, Robin Keston clearly did not. Uh, that's what he, if that's what he had put Matt Shields on, didn't even want to gamble with it, did he?
<laughs> that was a nice little raise for Matt Shields, wasn't it? Yes, both players Hold. raising the others. Possibly Matt felt perhaps he could have raised with that Queen-9 before and realised that perhaps he made a small mistake or so hard when you're sitting here you, you read more into it sometimes than is actually happening. <clears throat> well, Robin, before this heads up started, said to Matt Shields, we may as well just flip a coin. That's what it's going to be anyway. And uh, sometimes it's hard to find the w what kind of play there is, and especially with two aggressive players. I mean, obviously, if, if somebody folds every hand, he's at a disadvantage. But both these guys have a bit of wiggle to them. Well, I think whoever wins this heat will certainly have deserved it. It's been at times a war oh. of attrition, but it's had some magical moments as well. <laughs> I can't help it. That was like, you know, that was about uh, gone back half an hour ago. It's where we were half an hour ago. <laughs> I can't help it. We're back down to the six deuce business. Oh, I really expected it to race. <laughs> oh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> sorry. They speak. It tests your character. I mean, it really tests your patience, your will. This poker, uh, if, and if you lose patience, you're your history, aren't you? Well, I think that's probably the one thing you do learn with experience at this game is how to control yourself over a long period of time, especially as the blinds get bigger and you can get more excitable. Call. Call. 10-8. I don't think there's going to be too much of a confrontation looking at those two lineups. No, nobody's loving their hand. Certainly not now with those cards on board. There won't be too much gameplay okay. here. Bottom pair for Matt Shields. He's every reason to think it's the best. Sticking out a tester. Oh. Keston believes. If he only knew. <laughs> It's funny how both of these players have they've played quite a tight aggressive game and with little rifts and it's it's every time they've the, the deviation has come from their play is when they've accumulated all their chips. I guess um, you know Matt Shields won a whole bunch with uh, limping in. And, uh, Robin Keston with those two pair. It was, uh, it's sort of hard to predict. It's kind of when you make the the odd move. Robin's case. He's won quite a bit of money with Raise. the deuce threes and the three fours as well, hasn't he? 50, 70 total. This is the most out of line he's been for a while. That's the correct term. If he'd have run into a big hand, it would have been a bit of a swing, oh. but he didn't. <laughs> it's a real roll of the dice sometimes, isn't it? I mean, you stick out 70,000 on the deuce three. That, that, I mean, that had to make his heart flutter. And uh, Matt Shields was just praying to look down and find an ace. Could only find six high. And the stakes these guys are playing for are pretty tremendous. Of course, there's the glory that comes and the prestige with winning one of these. Aye, aye. Call. That's the second time. Hello. Here we go. No race. <laughs> I'm not sure. They, they 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 have to both be trapping. This is this is this is very interesting. <sighs> Three kings. Wow. Matt Shields will do well to stay in his seat here. Check. Check. <laughs> An ace comes now. It's all over. That might be enough to do it. Check. Check. He's checked again. He's really letting Robin wallow. Check. <laughs> Just has not moved. 40,000. Cool. Call. Cool. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 
nothing. Matt Shields checked it as long as he could. He gave Keston every chance to hang another, himself. Another one. Ended up getting 40,000. That may have been the maximum. Yes. He must have been thinking, how was I going to get any money out of him? And when he put Ooh, that just put money in, mm. when he put really? it in, I wonder if he thought he was going to get a call. <laughs> raise, yeah. His heart was probably thinking. That was tournament over there. Sinking. Anyone else? Yeah, Robin said he almost <sighs> raised with the ace. Got away from it. it uh, One bullet dodged. <laughs> but uh, once those three kings came out on board... You can understand why Matt Shields waited until the end. He, he just wanted to give Robin every I chance to get in trouble. Yeah, well, yeah. Ace on the river, we, we, you get it. Yeah. Don't give you the kings. Nice. <laughs> so, if he's right. not going to take a hand Ace. like that of massive proportions to uh, to separate these oh, two. You're starting to hit my cards now. Look, be careful. Then what is? Perhaps a player going so low stack that he's reaching the desperation stakes. I don't know, but he <sighs> put those kings and the a6 in the hand of 99% of other poker players head up, and uh, there would have been squeals on the wheels getting the chips in. Yeah, for, uh, so, for some of the uh, all-ins and some of the aggressive moves we've seen <laughs> from Matt and some of the all-ins from Robin, for that not to end in a conclusion <laughs> means they've also they're also Anyone pretty, gonna move it pretty crafty aren't they yeah i think they have a healthy dose of respect for each other uh, you know especially shields with that queen nine in oh, the nice. second hand of this head up he's realizing that uh, he cannot just bully 50 more robin. 70 total robin thinking the same all in cool. all in cool. <laughs> well, there it comes <laughs> <Finished that> well <laughs> And this is uh, okay. the matchup that could not be backed away chips, from. So. I, I think they've got about the same. Shields all in with the A6. It's pocket pair against the two overs. The winner of this is likely going to be the winner of the tournament. And that has hit Robin Keston. Set on the flop. Bingo. Well, Shields hasn't had much luck when it's come to the big showdowns. And it's mm. all over. Joined it. Yeah. Robin Keston is going through oh. to the semi-finals. Matt oh, no. Shields. Good 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 nonsense, the whole well, thing, the 50-50 50 uh, coups seem to have settled it. Well, in a heat like this, it seemed the 50-50 coin flip was going to solve it. On the flop, the five front and center. Full house for Robin Keston and Matt Shields. Shield it out. Flip for the coin and Robin Keston, congratulations. But it was a battle out there. Bullets dodged all night long. There wasn't one of the six players that couldn't have won this heat. I mean, it was literally, I mean, it was just tough. You saw it was just everyone clinging on and, and moving the chips at the right time. It was just a battle of attrition and the coin flips were just you know, the decider. It was just ridiculous, but that's how it came down today. Well, possibly we thought that Jim Britton couldn't win because he's so unlucky. <laughs> but actually, when it turned out, Matt, I mean, you, I think you had five sort of uh, heads-up coups with players, and you only won one of them in the end. On another yeah, day, right. on another day, it could have worked out so easy for you. Well, that, that's that's the part of the game that we, the reason we play is. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next. Um, ace Jack beats sixes. Ace Jack loses to nines. So. It's, it's part of the game. You, you, you've you got to live with it. You, it's a bit of fun. Um, I'll hit him afterwards or something. <laughs> you know, but, uh, good luck to him. I mean, Pocky Fires, is, he was in front. Pocky Fires stood up. Well, it's Robin Keston going forward to the semi-final stages. Join us next week at the PartyPoker.net European Open when the governor, Barry Hearn, takes on the gentleman, Liam Flood.